Hey guys, what's going on? Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade the bushings in the front end of one of these Dakotas, or maybe it is a Durango, should be the same front end. We got John Thug over here. <laughs> messing with parts. He's messing with some stuff. We've got the energy suspension bushings. And this is the kit, it's a whole front end kit. Apparently you don't need a press, you just need to uh, heat up the rubber bushings that are in there and just kind of punch them out. So that should be interesting. We're gonna try to get it done with maybe a heat gun. I don't have a torch here, so this should be interesting. But the truck is pretty much on the lift from the last time. We're gonna lift it up in the air. We'll pull the wheel off and uh, we'll get cracking. <laughs> All right, so we got the truck up in the air, wheels are off, and what we're gonna try to do, and I am going to test some stuff, we're gonna see if we can do it with the least amount of work possible. I do wanna clean some of this stuff up, but you'll see here, there's a couple bolts here that hold this whole bracket with the brake line. So we're gonna remove that, but we're gonna see if we can swing this out. Maybe, I don't know, honestly, it's only three more bolts yeah. on the upper. So we might do that, but the lower control arm, I don't know if we're gonna, uh, try to completely remove the lower control arm. The nice thing is the ball joints have already been replaced on this, so it's already got bolts there. We don't have to press out any, you know, bushing there, sorry. We don't have to press out any ball joints on the lower. Mm -hmm. We can just try to do this and just remove uh, the bolts out of there and get our thing out. It just depends whether we want to actually do this on the floor or do it hanging from the vehicle. So let us mess with it for a minute and we'll come up with uh, the best way as we start unbolting some stuff, right? Yeah, I think so. That's the deal. Let's try to do it as easy as possible. No, <laughs> typical Jonathan <Jonathug> fashion. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> One more thing I will mention is up here on these bolts on the upper control arm, we're gonna have to remove that whole upper control arm where it bolts to the actual frame. And those are adjustable, so that's where you can adjust the camber. So you might want to mark here where yours is before you remove it. Either way, I'm going to get alignment, but if you weren't doing alignment, you'd really want to know where it is. So we might mark it with a marker just so we can get it back close in the spec before we start taking too much off. All right, so we took off the upper control arm, and I'll probably show you guys this whole step on the other side, but we're still experimenting with the procedure on this because it kind of just tells you to take the control arm off. Um, but I'm just trying to do it again with out taking the whole truck apart. So control arms on the ground and it's not that bad, honestly, you guys. So three bolts here, two bolts there, and it's off. We loosened these when it was on the truck so that it was stable. So now we can take off the nut, the washer on both sides. And then we're gonna try to heat this up and take this bushing out. So that's gonna be the fun part of this whole thing, but Let's see what happens. Jonathan and I are doing exactly what the instructions said not to do. <laughs> <laughs> we got it smoking and flaming and all that stuff. And I'm actually taking, where'd the drill go? Oh, it's over there. This stuff is relentless to get out, but I'm taking a drill and kind of just drilling out. Make sure you're in a well ventilated. <laughs> yeah, this stuff stinks, but I'm just doing this just to get all the rubber out. Don't do this in your garage. Do it in your friend. <laughs> Go to Jonathan's house and do it. So that is what you don't want to happen, right? Or it is this what, is what we want. No, this is what you want. Okay. Yeah. This thing smells disgusting. Wait, you never smoked a tire before? No. You ever did burn out in a car? That's what that is. This is worse. This is America right here. <laughs> this is worse. <laughs> this is Canada right here. No, no. Just... Yeah, get some marshmallows and roast them? Mm, they might be toxic. <laughs> Alright, so heat gun didn't work, but the torch got it hot enough there it's coming out clean as you can probably see. We still got... Definitely still have flames, but at least you can see. I think you can see it's coming out nice, mostly. There we go. Woo. Nice. There. That was so much easier, man. Uh, so that's how it came out this time. Turn this off? Uh, no. Oh. I'm gonna have to clean the inside because it's still, still some junk in there. Let's see. Woo. 
Okay, so we had to go to the store real quick and we went ahead and got this grease. This is the grease that I used on all my polyurethane bushings, you guys. I can't remember where I found this, but this was from somebody that does this stuff day in, day out and deals with these polyurethane bushings. And if you use the grease supplied with the energy suspension kit, you will get squeaking. If you use this grease, I've had those polyurethane bushings in this car for, I don't know, like three, four years, and I have never got a squeak out of it. We've got polyurethane on the back of the truck now. Never had a squeak with this grease. So of course we're gonna use that. And then here's the, you know, the whole kit. So it consists of these collars and then these outer bushings. So these ones are for the lowers, so we're gonna wait on those. These are for the uppers. So you can see we have one in there. We we're just testing it. We had to clean all this out. So this bar stays in the middle and then this is gonna go through there. And then once we get this in there, this will go inside and then we can put our hardware back on. We did actually get a C clamp ball joint press just in case this fights us. We can't really use it here, uh, but on the lowers, once we take the lower off, we're gonna do the upper and then the lower separate. Once we take the lower off, we can actually use a C clamp press if we need to just in case because uh, I didn't want to be fighting with it and these are pretty tight tolerance. So anyways, let me get things greased up. We'll put it in and then we'll put in the bushings. All right, so I managed to just get this in with my hands. I'll show you guys on the other side. So I put a nice coating of grease in the inside, the outside, and also this. So I shoved that in with my hands and then I don't know if this is gonna fight us, but we'll find out here in a second. If I can get this in, I'm probably gonna have to do something like this, like stand it on the end. Maybe with the socket. Yeah. I think I'll only get it so far before it starts to fight me. Okay, so there's the raw bushing and it has a bunch of grooves in there that I like to pack full of grease as well. So we don't want the outside to slip, but I don't want to squeak and I just coat the outside with grease as well. So that's up to you guys if you guys want to do it or not, but I coat both ends of it inside, outside. That way we're nice and good here. So get all this in all the grooves and then we'll slide it in. Okay, so I just pushed the other side on with my hand. Hopefully I can do that on this side too. Ah, pretty much. And then I also put grease on the sleeve just to make everything easier so it can slide as well, rather than trying to get the grease from the inside of the bushing. So that's pretty much it. And I'll slide this guy in here too. And I'm probably gonna have to get something to hit it because I can't drive it just with my hands, so. Needs to go down more. Yeah. Okay, so you see when we tighten this side, it sucked it in that way. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side and then it'll bring that gap, it'll close that out and bring the bushing all the way in. All right, so you guys can see it sucked everything together. If you guys notice, I ground off this lip, which would normally smash into your headers. So uh, yeah, that's why mine looks a little bit different there, but uh, we'll clean it up, put it back on. We'll freshen up a little bit. And before you paint it, you do want to clean it off because you probably have grease on your hands, right? Yeah, I did clean it just quickly with brake clean, but like I said, it's not a show truck. I'm just making it a little nicer, that's all. All right, let's go ahead and we'll throw this back in here, however we got it out. One nut. And if you guys are wondering the alignment, because this is part of the alignment, we spray painted just before, I don't know if you guys can see it, some fresh paint, so that we had a general idea of where the dirt was before. All right, so we got the bolts tightened on here and we're moving on to the next step of this. And what I'm realizing is that this bolt for the lower control arm is gonna be in the way of our steering column, or our steering rack, I should say. So I don't think, I tried moving the wheel one way or the other, I don't think I'm gonna be able to manipulate it. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to take this off to be able to articulate it out of the way because I don't want to remove the whole rack. That would kind of suck. I think that's the only other way. I guess we could pull out one bolt in the rack if you want. Yeah, just to loosen it? Yeah, I mean the steering column's still gonna be attached but I think it would move around enough. All right guys, so that ended up being the easier way for sure. I just popped off these two bolts with our gun and now you can see I can get clear access to the bolt. And then once we get to this side, we'll do the same thing. We'll probably turn the wheels and move the steering rack just a tiny bit, enough so we can get that bolt out as well. But we're working on this side right now. All right, next step, we are gonna take a 10 mil 
and drop the shock. We've already removed, John's already removed the tops. Mm -hmm. So you wanna hit that with the gun? Or yeah. you want me to? Make sure you know which way's reverse because that'll snap it. John's had a few, few wobbly pops, we gotta watch out. He's had a few adult sodas, so we gotta... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's got the shock out. And next up, you wanna throw the gun on this top one? Where's the top one? Right here. So we're gonna disconnect the sway bar end link. So that's off now. You might as well take this stuff off because it's gonna drop out of there. Pretty much just the bolts on the bottom here. You guys can see I already took one out, but we're gonna remove the rest of these four for the ball joint, and then the lower control arm should be free. And it'll be hanging, the spindle and everything will be hanging off the top one. And then we can remove these two bolts. This one has a Torx bit there, and this one's just a different, uh, just regular six point. And before you guys ask, this spring is not gonna kill us because <laughs> <laughs> they're shortened, so there's hardly any stress on them. So we'll be okay, I promise. <laughs> Imagine. <Boom. laughs> if oh, just disclaimer, if you don't have, you know, lowering springs or something like that, definitely have something underneath this because it's gonna be under a ton of tension. Yeah, have like a jag or something. Yeah. Sweet custom string. You want, you want to take it? <laughs> oh, I got jiggled. <laughs> Look how rusty it is. <laughs> okay, and this is the reason why we're changing these bushings. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it is just dry rotted like crazy on both sides. So we're gonna heat them up, and then I'll use probably the the C clamp ball joint press, and we'll just pop them out. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this C clamp ball joint press. We're gonna heat this up and then we're just gonna drive it out. So this should make work a little bit easier rather than us trying to push it out with something else. She's starting to bubble. We're gonna get the other side of it, yeah. Here, just go, go. Woo! Dude, that was the easiest ever. Woo! That was gonna be Lightweight, I mean lightheaded. <laughs> that happened so fast, we didn't even get a chance to record it. <laughs> no. She's out, she's out boys. Cardboard's on fire. She's out, we got rubber everywhere. This, this turned into a, a hell job from a, to a fun job. So look, it's nice and clean all the way out. And this one's done. Okay, so you're gonna have two different sizes for the rear. You're gonna have a long skinny one and this shorter fatter one. So the shorter fatter one's gonna go here. You're gonna put them in from the outsides. So I got them mixed up, but, oh gee, oh, oh, oh. All right, so you're gonna put them in from the outsides. So the lips are gonna be on the outsides of these things. You're gonna put them in like so. So let's get them greased up, we'll put them in. So we'll put a bunch of this grease up in here. And then make sure you get the insides too, cause it's easier to do it now. And get all the little grooves all packed full of grease. What are the grooves meant for? Uh, just to keep, hold grease inside of it so that it has more grease in it to keep it lubricated. Because if it didn't have those grooves, then it would just be, a, you know, perfect fit. And it wouldn't be able to hold grease in there. It's probably, you know, you're going to end up putting in more than you're going to need, but it'll push out whatever you don't use. But I'd rather have a tiny bit too much than not enough. That way it doesn't squeak in the future. So now we'll go ahead and we'll insert it. I'll try to put it in as much as I can with my hand which apparently is all the way. And we can do the same with this one. So we'll put this one on and then we'll put the sleeves on. Same deal, just grease it all up inside and out. Okay. Ooh, that goes in real easy. I think cause we got them out so clean. Look at that. So there's all that and then we'll put in our steel collars. Okay, so here's our collars. Same thing as the uppers. Put a bunch of grease on just to make it easier. That one's gonna go here. So we'll see if we can push it in with our hands. Ooh, very nice. All right, so I'll push that last little bit, but same thing, put grease on this. And we'll slide it in. There it is. There it is. Okay. So. Everything's in and clean. My hands are covered in grease. I'm gonna swap gloves. 
and then we'll put these on. Okay guys, everything on this side is tight. Upper control arm's tight, brake lines are tight, sway bar end length's tight. We reinstalled and tightened our lower ball joint bolts. All that's tight. We tightened up our front and rear lower control arm bolts. We reinserted our shock, tightened it top and bottom. Everything's tight, let's move on to the passenger side. And I'm still gonna leave the power steering rack loose right now, because that helped tremendously to get out these front bolts. So we're gonna have to do the same thing on that side. All right, Jonathan's over here. So we're going full send. We're gonna remove the two bolts. Gotta remove the brake line off that. You guys know the rest. Remove the upper ball joint, three bolts. And then we'll take that upper control arm off. We'll do it the same way. We'll do the top first, then the bottom. That way we don't have to completely drop the spindle. Did you Maybe crack just. that bolt loose? No, I couldn't. You can't even get anything in there? I couldn't, I didn't, we didn't have the right size. We needed the crescent wrench. Jeez, 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 jeez. All right, we're gonna go ahead and zip this off. <laughs> that spun real good. Imagine it spun the other way. Ah. Easy peasy. Okay. On those I put PB blasters, so made it easy. Now for the not so easy part. Burn them off. Burn them up! Burn that camera. <laughs> Guys, do not try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's on fire. <laughs> we gotta come it out though. Slowly but surely. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out. It stinks. Sounds like burnt cargo. There it is. There it is. In one piece, too. Oh, we got it. Yo, we could sell this on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Now we got, still got one more. <laughs> it's clean, though. That's a clean bar. This is the harder one because you can't use the C clamp on it because yeah. of the bar in the middle. All right. Get out of here. We don't need to do <laughs> All right, let's do the next one. All right, guys. We're not experts, but. Wait until you get so hot that you see it start to kind of ooze some goo out of both sides. And that's actually like liquid rubber coming out. And then you can go ahead and try to pry it out like we're doing here. And the reason we can't use the actual C-clamp on this is because the bar is stuck in the middle. So we're having to pry it out, but we're getting it done. Okay, guys. We were putting in the bush. Woo! Fit like, like a glove. Nice. I feel like it fit so much easier because that came out way cleaner than the last one. <laughs> we'll put our collar in. I don't know if we're gonna get this in very easy, but oh damn it! What do you do? Oh, oh no! <laughs> Remember the nut figure? R.I.P. John. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so what are you doing? Whew. Well, turn of events, you guys. So I went to go put in the collar that comes with the kit. And look, because this truck, I think, was on an accident on this side. I don't think this is a OEM control arm. The bushings are the same, but look. This is actually bigger diameter. And the insert that energy suspension gives you do not fit. So what we're doing is the outer diameter is actually the same. So I'm having to take the steel insert collar off the old bushing and we're gonna use that inside there because since the outer diameter is the same, the inner diameter matches this and we'll make it work, but pain, you guys, pain. We're debating going to get another control arm, but I, don't, I think we'll be okay. So right now I'm just trying to get the rubber off of the inner sleeve right now. So it's not fun, but we're getting it done. Whatever it takes. Yep. All right, look guys, I'm actually rolling it off of here with a pair of needle nose pliers. It is just peeling off the bushing. So it's coming off clean and then we'll clean up with a wire brush and then we can reinsert it, but definitely was not planned. <laughs> but it worked out in our favor. It did, a little ingenuity, but it's gonna work. Ooh, polished now. So we just use the wire wheel just to clean off all the rubber so it's nice and smooth. And we should be good to go now. I still gotta do the other one, but 
Now we got a collar that should fit. All right, there she is. Nice and snug. Ooh -ah. That is perfect fit, actually. Ooh, I can't do it with my fingers, but yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, the right fit, so back in business. Woohoo! All right, there's the other collar all cleaned up. This one's fully in and seated. Let's go ahead and put it in. And we still have to put the bushing in, so let me get it all set up and put it in. Okay, guys, so after messing with it a bunch and getting those collars to fit on the aftermarket control arm, it looks like, uh, Energy Suspension sent us one wrong bushing. So the part number, which you can identify on the bottom, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a number stamped right there, that number there, that does not show up on our parts list. So I was wondering why one of them felt a little bit weird. It looks similar, but when you start investigating it, the part number on that particular rubber bushing or polyurethane bushing is different. And so they gave us one wrong rubber or polyurethane bushing in the whole kit, which is preventing me from putting the whole truck together. So I gotta figure that out. I'll probably have to wait till Monday to talk to Energy Suspension to see if I can get the right one. But I showed you guys the whole process. It's not a fun process, honestly. I thought it was gonna be a little easier to do, which it started to be once we kind of figured out the groove of things and how to get them out, heat them up and all that stuff. But now we're faced with a completely wrong bushing, so I can't really put it back together in that sense because even, the, even though it looks similar, this sleeve does not fit whatsoever inside of it. And there's, you know, steps in the actual bushing itself and they don't match up with the inside of here and it's a different size and that's a different size. So, uh, trust me, if I could get it to work, I would get it to work, but at this point in time, I can't. So it's not the first time I've had issues with energy suspension stuff. I ran into a bunch of issues as well with that too when I got the kits for that thing. Anyways, you guys, if you found this uh, informative or helpful, definitely make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'll update you guys once I get the truck back together, but I think you guys get the hang of things from seeing me do the passenger side. The other side's the same thing. Uh, it's just, you know, a lot of work as well, but definitely double check your bushings before you get into this. They looked all the same when we looked in the package. I didn't really think that I had to rifle through and check part numbers, but you know, just know that this is what you're gonna have to do if you get one of these kits. So make sure, double check, give a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos. We got a lot on the Dakota and other projects. We'll see you on the next one.